While most girls at school were on the dating scene, I was in a long-term relationship with my self-doubt. Yep, an abusive relationship that no matter how many times I tried to separate from it, dump it, call it quits, it just kept coming back. And just like a shadow, it has followed me everywhere, including into adulthood. Now guys, I'm not here to BS you. I still haven't figured out how to get rid of it. I gave up that fight a long time ago. But I did, however, learn over time how not to allow the doubt I may have in myself dictate if or how I show up. And so guys, today I'm going to be very candid with you and answer your questions about self-rejection and what to do in those moments of self-doubt. Welcome to Women of Impact. Hi Lisa, this is Davina Jackson from Optimism Designs and I have a question for you today. How do we as women who don't conform to the norm in businesses, what they say we should look like, dress like, or even speak like. How do we begin to not self-sabotage ourselves and never move forward? We don't look, dress, talk, or speak like anyone thinks that we should. And then we begin to doubt ourselves or feel like we're impersonating someone else. How do we not sabotage ourselves, Lisa? How do we move forward to be the best that we can be and being different and not conforming to the norm, but being the best that we were created to be, which is different. My spiritual gangster, love that question, girl. Okay, so here's the thing. We really need to think about who we want to be. Like all of these questions really come down to, we want to be something, we want to be, do something, and we have all these self-doubts that just keep hitting us. And so these self-doubts keep telling us that we should be going in different directions, we should be doing different things, you should be wearing something different, you should change your hairstyle, right? Hair example. And so it comes down to just identifying, it's all about the foundation, identifying what is true to you, right? So you've got your, your spiritual gangster shirt on, you've got your box on your finger, which I freaking love, right? So those are moments where you're like, this is me. Okay, so the great news is you're identifying the things that make you feel like you. Now you can start to see if that starts to get challenged. So for instance, oh God, let's just say it's, you make a list. Right, what are all the things that to me make up Lisa? So it's, um, I'm very expressive in my fashion. I love having weird hair. I love wearing massive watches that are bigger than my own arm. Like all these things I would write down. And then every time something comes to me, I would actually see if it actually challenged all the things I had on my list. So now it's not even about emotion, right? Because we all let our emotions take or get away from us sometimes. And sometimes that can be detrimental to us. So what we want to do is have a list, no bias, what makes up you? Write that list, guys. Write that list. Pause this video, write it down. And welcome back. So now you've got the list. Now, every time you do something, just go back to your list. Use it as like your cheat sheet. Take a look at Women of Impact, for instance. There was one episode where I wore pink leggings. Now, I'm reading the comments. I'm so proud of the episode. The interview was freaking fire. I'm reading these comments. People are like, oh my God, Lisa, that's amazing. Oh, I love this. Ah. And then one comment is like, I couldn't listen to this interview anymore because your pink, leg your pink leggings and your 90s style is too distracting. Okay, so here I am, getting a comment about the way I dress, the way I look. And here's the tricky thing. My goal is to impact people. So I've got a goal of impacting people and my fashion sense, my dress sense is now the complete opposite. I'm literally turning people off. Literally just by wearing my leggings, I put off impacting people. So now here I am left in a situation. I've got a goal and I need to be authentic to myself. What do I do? What do I do? So in this situation, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, all right, your instinct, Lisa, is to get upset, is to, your ego to be dented. I can't believe she doesn't freaking like my leggings. All right, fine. Yes, I know that I can get over that. Now the next thing is to really address what's more important. Ooh, what's more important? My business and my goals or my own self-image? tough one it's a tough one but here's the thing guys for me to show up for my business for me to show up for the show for me to do the interviews for me to really be freaking present for you guys I have to serve myself first I 
have to be there for myself first. I have to make sure I'm always showing up as the true Lisa first. And so I had my answer. And so my response literally was, thank you so much for this feedback. I'm still going to wear my pink leggings. And I'm so sad that they're distracting enough that you don't like the episode. But in order for me to show up every day, I must stay authentic to myself. Now, that wasn't easy. That was the very first time I did it. So I was in a place where I had no idea how to handle it. But the key is to just break it down, break it down, break it down without letting your emotions get in the way. Break it down, break it down, break it down. And so that's how I came to my conclusion. Here's the extra thing that I'm going to sprinkle on top, guys. I was very okay with saying, but Lisa, if you keep your pink uh, uh, leggings on, are you willing for the entire channel to feel the same? And now your entire business of, you know, doing these interviews and building this channel is gone. Now that's a really hard question to ask. Now it's really affecting, okay, how I feel about myself and my business, the entire thing, my entire goal. And I ask myself that question and the answer is yes, I'm okay with it. And that's now how I know, that's now how I have my guiding light. I'm okay with my business failing. I'm not okay with letting myself down. I've done it too many times, guys. I spent eight years as a stay-at-home wife leading a life that wasn't mine. Fuck that shit, I'm not doing it anymore. Period, done. I told myself that and I'm staying true to myself. That is it, no negotiations, done. So now I know exactly how to do it. Boom, there it is. Okay, hi Lisa, um, huge fan by the way. Um, I'm Nikki and my question is regarding to, I wanna start a YouTube channel where I already did, but I only put two videos so far and that was two years ago and then I procrastinated for two years of course. Um, so I was wondering um, how you deal with that little voice inside your head because every time I put up a video or anything um, I usually just go like these are my first thoughts oh it sucks why am I even trying it's not good and I reject it immediately um, so in order to substitute that and um, reset my mindset I was wondering what kind of phrases do you personally use to substitute those phrases and also what, what are some statements that are more realistic because if I said Oh, I hate this. I hate this video. I can't really go to, oh, I love it. I feel like I'm faking it. Um, it just doesn't seem, I feel like I don't believe it myself. So what would be some statements or what phrases do you personally use um, that are realistic, truthful and encouraging? All right, girl, that's such an amazing question. I've got the answer for you. All right, you ready? Right now, watch one of my YouTube videos. Now sit down with a notebook and do a column. Things you liked I did, things you, that you didn't like that I did. Pretty easy, right? You're going to be able to do that. Now, why do we find it so hard to do that with ourselves? Right? Like, take your video that you said that you put up two years ago. Get a notebook, t put two columns. What you did right, what you did wrong. It's so freaking hard when you do it about yourself because we have so much attached to it. We have our ego, we have our emotions, we have our feelings. But yet, you would absolutely be able to do that on one of my videos, but the second you look at your own, you're just gonna be beating yourself down. So what I would do is actually approach it like a business and go, cool, I'm going to build something. And I'm starting from scratch. It's all about language that you use. Put emotion aside and just say, I am the learner. I'm a student. If you go in thinking that you're the expert, you're setting yourself up honestly for disaster. But if you tell your, yourself you're a student, imagine first day of school, you walk into the class, you're about to do, I don't know, freaking philosophy or whatever. Let's say it's a class of philosophy. I don't expect for day one for me to know everything. Would you? If you were studying medicine, day one, would you go into class and expect to be the shit? No, you're gonna know nothing. You're gonna know what you learned from high school and potentially in England, college before you go to university, but you don't have high expectations of yourself. You know, oh, I'm here to learn, I'm here to grow. I know nothing now, but that's why I'm here. But yet we don't allow ourselves to do it in other avenues. 
So girl, literally change the way, the language that you use. I love that you've already put two videos out. Now just say, I'm the student. This is my second day of class and I'm here to learn. I'm going to shoot a video. I'm going to get a notepad like Lisa said. I'm going to do two columns, gray and shit. And I'm going to write down in the great section all the things I think I did well. Because it's important to identify the things that you're freaking proud of. First one, top of the list, I showed up and pressed record. There you go, I've just given you your first plus on the side of the column. Now the other side, without judgment, just ask yourself, what can I be better at? I like to use harsh language, I'm like, what was shit about it? But whatever makes you feel good, that's going to motivate you. So what did I do wrong? Maybe you don't like the word wrong. What can I do better? How can I improve? Whatever freaking language works for you guys. But use the language to set yourself up for success. So be the student. Don't worry about all the failures, all the mistakes you're going to make. That's part of the process. So you want to know the language I use? It's part of the process. I'm a student. Boom. There you have it. Hi, Lisa. Um, so my question today is, uh, first of all, I would like to give a background. Um, I have always been seen as the perfect kid, as the perfect person, which I actually hate. But that has always given me um, the discourage to express myself and be who I truly am. Um, so um, I care too much about people, about what they think of me, about their feelings that I actually sometimes forget mine. Uh, but yeah, I do a lot of self-rejection in the sense of like when I want to post something, I'm going to think, oh, um, what is this person going to think of me? Or when I want to say something, uh, is this truly me? Or when I want to do an action, is this truly me? So I do a lot of like self-rejection, which is not healthy for me. And I wanted to know what advice you have for me to stop doing that and stop caring about what people think of me and show my truly self. Thank you. Oh God. All right, here's the, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. I still care what people think. So I'm not gonna be your person I'm like, all right, here's what you do so you don't care about what people think. I actually think that's BS and I'm never gonna BS you guys. But the truth is, I still care. I can't shut that off. That's part of my personality. That's part of, I think, what actually gives me the magic sauce. I do care what people think. But here's the thing. I don't let it dictate how I act. And that's the key. And a lot of stuff, a lot of content, a lot of people saying, this is how you don't care, don't give a shit. I, I just haven't done, I've been, never been able to get there, guys. So I literally said to myself, I can't do it. Like no matter how much I try, I can't not care. I do care. And so that's when I realized, stop trying to be like everyone else. What's the least away? What's the thing that's going to keep you going forward? Because that's the goal, right? It's, it's not about whether you care or not. It's about whether you act or if you freeze. That's what matters. So I go, cool, now I know. I need to keep going. And that's the important part. So I can't allow me caring to affect this. So hopefully that is the best news ever because now we can stop fighting a losing battle. Like that was why I came up with it because I'm like, this is a battle I just can't win. So cool, now I know. Okay, Lisa, you care. That, was what makes, that makes you special. I tell myself that every day. That's what makes, that what, that's what gives you the big heart. Now, the tricky thing is, how do you not let that affect how you show up? Because that's exactly what you're doing, right? You're the perfect child. You, you've got like this, like sadly, umbrella over you that is keeping you from moving forward. It's the perfect child. Oh my God, so what if I do something wrong? Anytime you try anything new, anytime you're gonna fail, you're gonna do shit wrong, it's part of it. So it's so important, yes, that you need to get over this in order for you to start living the life you actually want. And that's gonna be a stepping stone process. It's not gonna be a one and done. So who are the people in your life right now that you feel are holding you back from trying new things? Like, who are the people you're people-pleasing? Let's start identifying that. No judgment. Again, guys, put the judgment aside. Seriously, with no judgment, who are the people? Actually make a list. Is it your mom? Is it your dad? Is it your friends? Is it a partner? Is it, um, you know, a, a teacher that, whoever. Make a list of all the things that, um, of all these people that you want to please. And now here's the hard thing. Ask yourself, 
if I did X, Y, and Z, how would they respond? And the truth is, maybe a lot of those people are gonna hate what you did. They're going to say negative things to you. They're going to try and tear you down, maybe deliberately, maybe not deliberately, I'm not here to judge, but those are all gonna happen. And now ask yourself, what if you don't do it? And what if you do do it? Take my husband. I'm British, I'm Greek. I want to introduce a guy to my dad. It's the first guy, I'm the first person in my entire family to ever date someone outside of our culture. I really want to impress my dad. And here's a guy that I've just brought home and I know he's not gonna be pleased. I know he's not gonna be pleased. And in that moment, I ask myself the hard question, whose life am I living? No judgment, remember? But whose life am I living? Do I wanna live my dad's life? Or do I wanna live mine? Because if I decide, it's a decision, if I decide I want to live my life, I now must act in accordance to that. So acting in accordance to that means I will listen to my dad, I will hear him out. If he says, oh my God, you don't understand the difference in cultures, it won't make your relationship last. I will listen to him, I will respect his opinion. But I've just decided I'm living my life, remember? So now what do I do is I say, cool, there might be some truth to my dad's concerns, but ultimately, it's gonna rub some people the wrong way, and I honestly mean it in, with all sincerity, my dad isn't going to be here forever. What happens after that? Whose life am I living? So for you, girl, whose life are you living? What life do you want that to look like? And now you can deal with things in accordance. So that doesn't mean you go back and you disrespect everybody else, but you do explain what life you want. And, re and iterating that and telling yourself day after day after day, try one small thing, try another small thing. What's the thing you're scared of? Do it behind closed doors. Don't tell anyone, don't tell your parents, don't tell anyone, allow yourself room to fail. But eventually start showing people, start taking action, show what you're made of and who you are and who you've decided to be. And over time, people will either show they respect it or they show they won't. And that will all come out in the wash and then you can act in accordance to that. But first, it comes to decide who you wanna be. So you've got two options. You can be the perfect child or you can be you. Like actually decide. And here's the thing, guys, if you literally want to spend your entire life being the perfect child, there's no judgment here. Go, go do that. You really should, if that's what you want. But it doesn't sound like you do. So now, with your two choices, you've got your answer. Lisa Bilyeu, the one and only. How do you stay true to your message of helping others see the invaluable worth that they have within themselves, regardless of their life situation, circumstance, whatever it may be, in order to grow your business. How do you stay true to that message without getting lost in these sound bites of trying to stay on top of the popular trend or trying to just whatever? How do you stay true to the message of being authentic to your message, authentic to yourself, in truly wanting to create change on a massive level in order to help the world become a better place for those left standing. What an amazing question. Thank you so much for that. So here's the thing, there's actually two elements to it. It's one, finding value in yourself and staying true to yourself, and then two, going on your goal and your journey of building your business. And in the question, you've kind of meld them into one and I find that very difficult. So what I do is take one thing at a time because if you start your business, if you haven't laid the foundation of, um, of strength, of um, resilience, then when you get into the weeds of building your business, building you know whatever goal that is, you may find that you may crumble because you haven't built that foundation. So let's actually start from step one, which is building the foundation in valuing yourself. So that was actually one thing that really stood out to me when you said that, how do you value yourself without external input? And that's very tricky and it's going to take time. But if you're willing to do it, here it goes. 
So first of all, you have to actually just acknowledge what is the voice telling you? And when I say the voice, I mean the, the negative voice in your head that's actually saying you're not valuable. So you have to identify what you're beating yourself up over first before you can then attack that. So let's say the negative voice is saying, oh my God, you're not smart enough. And you start to believe it. So now you value yourself less, which means of course that's going to affect your business. So, okay, I'm stupid. Use that as a message. Now, of course, it's not going to be easy, but if you can, stop in your tracks as the thought is coming in. What is that thought saying? You're stupid. Okay, I always say treat it like a friend. Guys, I've tried to stop that noise. I've tried to stop that freaking, you know, voice in my head from telling me time and time again when I fall, when I do something wrong. Oh my God, Lisa, you're stupid. I've tried to switch it off. I definitely can't. So what I do is it's my friend. Now, friend, tell me the things that I'm not hearing. Okay, you're stupid. I'm stupid at what? Let's be very specific. You're stupid at math. Okay, great. Can I get better? Do I need to know math to use it for my business? Because if you do, then you can learn. There's so many online things that you can teach yourself. There's YouTube, free YouTube videos. So there's all these different types of um, avenues that you can go and get better at skills skill sets. Okay, so now if that's where you value yourself, tell yourself you can get better every day. Now I'm going to actually change. I don't know if this is what you're asking, but the subject of valuing yourself is so freaking important that I also want to talk about if it's value within, let's say your looks. Now that's going to be a very different approach than your value in your ability to achieve something, your ability to um, create a, build a company, for instance. So the value in yourself, if for instance, every time you look at yourself and you just don't value yourself, you don't value what you see back, that's so, that's so heartbreaking and yet I completely get it. And now here's the thing, you, you, if you want to grow, if you want to progress, you cannot just accept it. You cannot look in the mirror and just accept the negative void that's, fe that's feeding this negative loop that you have in your head. Like I just literally said to myself one day, I've had enough. I've drawn a line. I've had enough of how I feel about myself every time I look in the mirror. So now if I've had enough, I cannot wait for other people to validate me. That's just a freaking recipe for disaster because what if it never comes? I'm literally waiting for other people no, be the freaking hero of your own life. You've got this girl. So be the hero and start to now say, how do I value what I see back? I am not going to accept the fact that I do not value myself. So just drawing that line of not accepting it is a big freaking step. And then you can go into what are the things that you can change? What are the things that are gonna make you feel valuable? Like for me, I pride myself, guys, on being an amazing wife. Like honestly, the I freaking work my ass off in business, but being a great wife is absolutely something that is valuable to me. And now I know if I'm not doing the task, if every day I'm not showing up trying to be a good wife, I start to value myself less. But the great news is I can control it. I can control that. I can control how much value I'm bringing other people. <sighs> All right. So now onto the second part of what you were saying of once you've figured that out, how on earth do you stay true to it? Girl, it is a constant battle. But think of it like a skill set. Every day you have to get up and you have to work on it. Think about it. In fact, think about going to the gym, right? You go to the gym, you're consistent, you're consistent, you're consistent. You can pick up five pound weights and you can pick up 10 pound weights. Oh shit, maybe you can pick up 20 pound weights. But it takes consistency. It takes repetition. It takes every day showing up even when you don't want to. So treat that type of mentality with how you would with your business and staying true to yourself. It's going to take regular, consistent time of you reassessing what you're doing. And it has to be continuous. 
continuous and it has to be constant. It's not like you're just going to set a goal and um, be like, okay, I'm going to stay strong to this no matter what and then set and forget. That will never work. Every single day I show up and I say, am I bringing value to this? If the answer is yes and something comes at me, I said, is this the right thing for me? How do I make this decision? Is this true to me? Now, how do I know if it's true to me? Because I've just built the foundation that lays out what that looks like. So now I've built the foundation, I've got a roadmap, but I've always got that home base to keep going back to, to every day ask myself the question, is this true to myself, yes or no? Hey Lisa, you said this over here, but now you're not acting in accordance. Great, I can re change my behavior and realign with what my foundation is, but you need that first. You need it first, you need it first. Hi Lisa, my name is Kalyani, I'm from India and I've been biggest fan of your show since forever and also your husband's show. So you guys are just amazing and I am so glad I found you all. My question is that, see, I was always a good student but over the last few years I've been failing some exams. Like these are professional exams, people fail in these exams, like the statistics are like that. So I feel like my identity is questioned, like it goes to my basics and I'm not performing up to that level of expectations that I had. So I know eventually I'll overcome it. Okay, I have that confidence, but I don't know how to deal with the doubt, self-doubt every day because there's always one voice telling me, you failed it in the past, what if you do it again? So what do you do in such situation? Can you please tell me? Thank you so much. Such an amazing question. Thank you so much. Okay, so here's the thing. You've got two choices. Expectations can either be handcuffs and shackles or they can be wings so that you can fly. It's your choice. And for me, I choose to have them as wings. Now, here's what I mean by that. Expectations can be shackles, right? You can set expectations and now you're so driven. You're so blind to everything else. You're so focused on that expectation. That is all you do. You don't actually assess, am I enjoying it? Do I love life? Like, what do I want out of life? Am I doing the wrong, wrong thing? You don't allow yourself to ask yourself those questions because you have an expectation. So for you, your expectation is be an amazing student. That's your high expectation. And so now your identity is being dented because you're not crushing it, let's say. So I would say right now, your expectations are shackling you. Now let's reframe it. What if your expectations were wings? So what I mean by that is, what do you expect as a result from yourself? Not expectation from the actual thing itself. Is it that no matter what I do, I'm gonna show up at, to the best of my ability? No matter what I do, I'm going to freaking have fun and love my life, right? Those types of expectations can serve you versus the other type. So let's take a few things about what you said and let's break that down. So right now you pride yourself, your identity is being like an excellent student and you're failing. So let's actually ask why you think you're failing. Is it that you're just not good enough yet? Like I'm gonna ask the very hard question because don't feel badly, just answer it. Is it that you're not good enough yet? If you put me in front of a freaking exam right now, a science exam, I'd fail. I'd absolutely get an F, no questions asked, I would fail. But do I want to be amazing at it? Like, ask yourself that question, because if the answer is yes, now we can go, cool, how do you become amazing at these things that you're failing at? Because then you can actually switch your identity instead of saying, I am amazing at this, and now my, I've not hit my expectations. You can say, I want to get amazing at this. That's my expectation. I'm going to grow. I expect myself, expect myself to grow every day and I'm going to get better until I'm freaking amazing. Change your identity in that and you're still on the same path. And now you're not feeling badly about failing. You can actually see it in some way as a positive because you're always saying I'm better today than I was yesterday. So that's one way of handling it. Another thing that I do want to address though is do you actually want it? Like that's something that I myself have found that when I'm struggling and I'm not enthusiastic about getting better, it usually means I'm doing something I actually don't want to do. So I want to put out a question to you and I don't know the answer and because I'm not on live video with you, you can't answer me, but I really mean this. Do you actually want to be studying that? Like, actually, is that what you want to be doing with your life? If the answer is yes, then I've just gave you a path on how you uh, can progress and not let your identity take a dent. 
But really think about it. Because sometimes I start to fail in stuff I really don't care about. I'm just going to say it's the truth. I really don't care about it. So I don't put as much time, as much energy into it. I don't hold myself to a certain um, value system of how much I'm working towards it. And so everything just starts to slip, starts to slip, and I end up failing. That's for me an actually a great way, a great signifier of knowing if I'm actually doing something that I should be doing or not. So I know if I'm failing time and time again, do I actually want to do it? Chances are I don't. But again, you should definitely take a look and ask yourself the same question, girl. Because if you don't want to do it, the amazing thing is you now know. And now you're not spending another five, 10 years going down that path only to realize those were wasted years. So hopefully, again, because I don't know which way you're leaning towards, hopefully I gave you two answers that allow you to pivot in each direction. What up guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like another dose of bad arsery, make sure you watch this video right here or this one right here, because I know you'll like them. But hey, also, while you're here guys, you might as well click that subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future episodes. And until next time, be the hero of your own life. Peace out.